Thank you for joining another episode of our final countdown with us. Uh, today, we're going to do one more test <laughs> of a true prophet. And so, uh, before we do, let's have a prayer. Father in heaven, thank you again for another opportunity to study your word and to delve into this idea of true prophets. And we pray, Father, for the Holy Spirit to guide us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So, Nancy, <laughs> we have one more test of a true prophet to identify. Um, but before we do that, I, I think uh, we should just do a little bit of some review. Okay. Um, so, in that, Good idea. In, in, in part one, <laughs> we looked at um, the first test, which is Isaiah chapter 8, verse 20. You know, the Bible says... The Bible says clearly, if they don't speak according to this word, mm -hmm. there's no light in them. That's right. Even if they're very sincere, all these different things, there's no light in them. Um, and so we have to stand on that principle. Then there's another test number two, which was in Matthew chapter 7, verse 20, um, where the Bible lets us know that by their fruit, you're going to know them, mm -hmm. right? Um, by their actions, by the way they live their life, um, things that are said about them, you're going to know whether what they're saying is of God and what it's not. Then we had the third test, which was Jeremiah 28, verse 9. Um, if what they say actually comes to pass, mm -hmm. then you can take it as truth. But we have to remember that all of these tests can't stand alone. It has to be together. Um, and so, test number four, Nancy. What, what will be test number four? Test number four is 1 John. <laughs> and that's in verse, uh, chapter 4, verse 2. Every spirit that confesseth that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. Mm -hmm. Wow. So, and I, I know from just my experience um, from reading um, Ellen White, and I'm sure you would agree that out of all the tests, this is probably the easiest um, when it comes to her writings. <laughs> yes. Because she spoke about this on, quite extensively. You can find this a lot all throughout her writings. Um, and so let's look at uh, one of her writings, uh, Desire of Ages. Okay page 19. Okay. She says, Ellen White, she says, from the days of eternity, the Lord Jesus Christ was one with the Father. So, Nancy, she says um, Jesus was one with the Father. So, can we safely agree that she's passed this, this first test, this fourth test? It seems so. Seems so. Seems so. <laughs> and so, as we move right along and go through our writings, we're going to see if, 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 if these things are actually so. But we know that the first, and what we see in Desire of Ages, chapter 19, it's clear. Now, Nancy, what's the next piece of writing that she has? Okay, she also wrote Counsels to Parents and Teachers and Students. <clears throat> and it says, in it, meaning the Bible, we may learn what our redemption has cost him, who from the beginning was equal with God, with the Father and who sacrificed his life that a people might stand before him redeemed from everything earthly, renewed in the image of God. Sounds like she's encouraging people to become more and more like God, like Christ. Mm, like Christ, like mm -hmm. God. You know, Nancy, as we continue on in this and we go to our, her next writing, um, you know, I've, I've noticed throughout Christendom, um, some people are, are unsure if, if of the Godship of Jesus. Mm -hmm. um, some people try to be maybe they won't say it this, but they try, they belittle Jesus and say, oh, he's not really God, he's a demigod, or he's he's this, this, and that. Well, according to the scriptures, Nancy, um, we both would agree that Jesus Christ is God. He is. Um, and the that's, Bible is clear on that. That's right. Um, and so when we stand, we stand on the Bible, but then as we go to someone who is claiming to be a prophet, which we believe Ellen White is a prophet, she's saying the same thing, the same thing the Bible says. And mm -hmm. so here we see that Again, with test number four, it is confirmed um, mm -hmm. what we just read. Now, continuing, continuing on, um, Ellen White and the Desire of Ages again on page 25 has this to say. She says, Christ was treated as we deserve, that we might be treated as he deserves. He was condemned for our sins in which he had no share, that we might be justified by his righteousness in which we had no share. He suffered the death which was ours, that we might receive the life which was his. Well, that's beautiful. Mm, 
beautiful. And, and, and what's so beautiful about this, Nancy? Well, it's beautiful because of the way she worded it, and she only had a third grade education. <laughs> <laughs> right. She only had a third grade education. And, you know, this is one of my favorite quotes that I love to read mm -hmm. um, in, in, in the Spirit of Prophecy and in, in the book Desire of Ages. And again, Jesus has life in himself. And only God can, can, can give life. God, only God can create life, out of, especially out of nothing. And so, again, does this test pass the, the requirement for the fourth test, Nancy? Yes, it does. Okay, all right. So we see with that quote in her, one of her writings that she's doing fairly well. So moving right along, in the book Great Controversy, page 625, Ellen White has this to say. She says, only those who have been diligent students of the scriptures and who have received the love of the truth will be shielded from the powerful delusions that takes the world captive. You know, <clears throat> I love this quote um, in the context of what we're looking at because, uh, again, Ellen White says, only those who have been diligent students of the scriptures. So she's encouraging, you know, people to stand on the scriptures, to study the scriptures out. And so, again, um, Ellen White has nothing to hide. Um, she was led by the Spirit of God. And again, what she's speaking about can be confirmed in the scriptures. There's another quote there, too. Mm -hmm. um, None but those who have fortified the mind with the truths of the Bible will stand for the last great conflict. Mm -hmm. That's also in Great Controversy, but that's on page 593. So now, Nancy, the Bible talks about something called the time of trouble. Mm -hmm. um, and I want us to dive into that and see um, if what the Bible says about the time of trouble, um, the time that's um, just before um, this, uh, this right coming right on, on the planet Earth. Um, let's see if Ellen White, um, what she had to say about the time of trouble is, um, agrees with what the Bible has to say. Okay. And so our first Bible text is gonna be Daniel chapter 12, verse one. Okay. And the Bible says, and at that time, shall Michael stand up, the great prince, which standeth for the children of thy people. And there shall be a time of trouble, such as never was since there was a nation, even to that same time. And at that time, thy people shall be delivered, everyone that shall be found written in the book. So Nancy, we see that the Bible does talk about, from this verse, something called the time of trouble. Mm -hmm. So Nancy, would you like to read for us um, the commentary Ellen White had to say about this. Oh, sure. Before the Son of Man appears in the clouds of heaven, everything in nature will be convulsed. Lightning from heaven, uniting with the fire in the earth, will cause the mountains to burn like a furnace and pour out their floods of lava over villages and cities. Molten masses of rock thrown into the water by the upheaval of things hidden in the earth will cause the water to boil and send forth rocks and earth. There will be mighty earthquakes and great destruction of human life. And that's in a Bible commentary, volume seven. Wow. So, I mean, just reading that, that sounds like a time of trouble. Mm -hmm. It doesn't sound like things are, 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 are peaceful. It doesn't sound like things are just going normally as, 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 as we know life to be. So this would be a time of trouble. Um, in fact, Ellen White, as we go forward, um, she has something else to say about this time of trouble um, in the book Manuscript Release on um, page 382. She says, famines will increase, pestilences will sweep away thousands. Um, and, and we're gonna see um, what the Bible has to say about these pestilences and famines and things like that. But again, um, this time of trouble, such as never was, um, what we, that we see in Daniel chapter 12, verse one, um, Ellen White is speaking on it, commenting on the same time. It's the same, it's a time that never was. Um, the things that will be happening on the world in her commentaries or what she says, what she says under divine inspiration mm -hmm. will be the same of this time of trouble. And so Nancy, would you like to continue reading on what Ellen White has to say? Last Day Events, a uh, book that is a compilation of, of her writings on mm -hmm. the last days. She Our says, days. the season of distress and anguish before us will require a faith that can endure weariness, delay, and hunger, a faith that will not faint, though severely tried. Mm -hmm. So she's 
laboring on the thought that this is not going to be a very pleasant time, but God's people need to go through it in order to be purified. Right. Um, that, that was perfectly <laughs> and perfectly well said. And, you know, speaking about this time of trouble, Nancy, the Bible says that this is a time that never was. Mm -hmm. A time that, you know, think about the worst times in, in, in United States history or let's just take United States, for example. I mean, we have world history that was bad, but... Well, like when the Twin Towers came Twin out. Towers, right. That was a devastating time. I was in second grade <laughs> um, when it happened. But, you know, I could realize even at that young age that this is not normal. Um, we have World War I, World War II, mm -hmm. all these different things. And the Bible says, even though those times are, were very bad, the time of trouble is going to be far worse than these times. And as she says here, and what you just read, we need a faith that can endure weariness, hunger, and delay. This is going to require a faith that has never been, you know, a faith that is very strong and rooted in the Word of God, because you're going to need that. But continuing on, Ellen White has this to say, um, speaking more about the time of trouble, and this is found in volume nine of the Testimonies, page 28. She says, I saw an immense ball of fire fall among some beautiful mansions, causing their instant destruction. I heard someone say, we knew that the judgments of God were coming upon the earth but we did not know that they would come so soon. Others with agonized voices said, you knew. Why then did you not tell us we did not know? Oh, that's kind of a slap in the face to us. We need yeah. to be telling people. Right. So listen, viewers, please. <laughs> yes. And so we have a divine commission to, to go and tell the world, you know, uh -huh. spread the good news and the gospel. But not only just about the good news and the gospel, we have three angels' messages found in the book of Revelation, and the world needs to be warned on what's coming. Mm -hmm. But in this instance, this is from the perspective, um, this is Ellen White's writings, but it's from the perspective of someone that did not know what was coming. They did not know that this time of trouble such as never was, was coming. And they say to the people that knew, I didn't know this was coming, but you knew. Why didn't you tell us? Mm -hmm. And so, you know, let that not be our case. You know, let us tell people what is coming. That's right. Um, but as we are diving into this specific topic, again, what Ellen White has to say about the time of trouble matches what the Bible has to say. And we're going to see what the Bible has to say more about the time of trouble. Um, and continuing, Nancy, what else does Ellen White have to say? Well, she kind of has a little bit to say about trade unions, mm. the unions. And I guess it's been quiet for uh, many years now, but I guess it's going to be coming back, she says, the trade unions will be one of the agencies that will bring upon this earth a time of trouble such as has not been since the world began. Mm. A few men will combine to grasp all the means to be obtained in certain lines of business. Trade unions will be formed and those who refuse to join these unions will be marked men. And so continuing on, we have to look at another Bible text to confirm what will be happening during this time of trouble um, okay. in the last days. Okay. And we're living in the last days, um, friends. Uh, the Bible is clear about that. In fact, let's turn our Bibles to Matthew chapter 24, verse 21 through 27. For then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor ever shall be. And except those days should be shortened, there shall no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. Then, if any man shall say unto you, Lo, here is Christ, or there, believe it not. For there shall arise false Christs and false prophets, and shall show great signs and wonders, insomuch that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. Behold, I have told you before. Wherefore, if they shall say unto you, Behold, he is in the desert, go not forth. Behold, he is in the secret chambers, believe it not. For as the lightning cometh out of the east and shineth even unto the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Mm, this is, this is, it's a lot here um, <laughs> that we could dissect. As we're, we could spend the whole rest of the time. Yeah, we could spend the whole rest of the time verses. dissecting all of this. But some points that I want to highlight um, as we go on this, um, through this study is, this is, if you're reading this in your Bible, um, our Bibles have red letters. Mm -hmm. uh, this is Jesus speaking. Mm -hmm. And Jesus is literally warning his people about what's coming. Isn't that beautiful the way Jesus doesn't let us get blindsided? Right. 
That's why he has prophets. That's why he has prophets, exactly. <laughs> um, and you know what's so interesting? That just shows his love for us. Yes. Because when yes. you love someone, you don't want them to be caught off guard. That's right. Maybe they might not understand a, a particular message that you give them, but you send someone to help them. Mm -hmm. When you don't understand a message, what do you do? You get a tutor, you get a teacher. And God sends prophets to help direct his people because they need direction. But we see here that God is, is Jesus, is, who is God, is, is warning his people about what's coming. And now, Nancy, let's notice what Ellen White had to say mm -hmm. about this in one of her writings. This is in a book called Faith that I, li Faith I Live By, page 346, paragraph 4. She says, The Savior has warned his people and has clearly foretold the manner of his second coming. This coming, there is no possibility of counterfeiting. It will be universally known, witnessed by the whole world. You know, Nancy, I couldn't help, as I, I was reading this quote, think of this false doctrine of the secret rapture. Oh, yes. <laughs> Friends, according to the Bible and what Jesus just told us and what his prophet just told us, there's going to be nothing secret about <laughs> nothing. his coming. <laughs> I, yeah, right. I'm not going to have to call you, Nancy, and say, hey, did you see Jesus in the clouds? Like, <laughs> did, you, did you see what's going on? No. Nancy's going to see it or, herself, I'm going to see ourselves, the people that live on the other side of the world are going to see this themselves. This will not be a secret. We don't know how that can be possible, but yeah, right. apparently it's possible. it's possible. Nothing is impossible with God. Yeah, exactly. And so, and so that's something that is clearly highlighted here. But again, we see that um, what the Bible says is going to happen um, and how this is going to be a, a, a serious time in which we're living in. Um, Ellen White confirms it and with, even with a little bit more detail. That's right. And so um, Ellen White, that's not the only thing Ellen White had to say um, about this. Um, and so Nancy, would you like to read what else she has to say? In a book called Darkness Before Dawn, um, she says, and furthermore, Satan is not permitted to counterfeit a mat the manner of Christ's advent. The Savior has warned his people against deception upon this point and has clearly foretold the manner of his second coming. Wherefore, if they shall say unto you, Behold, he is in the desert, etc. This coming, there is no possibility of counterfeiting, just like she said in the other one, and it will be universally known. Mm. That is clear. Um, you can't refute that. That's right. <laughs> um, that's clear and straightforward. Um, and as we continue, um, in the book, Great Controversy, a book that we just read another quote from, she has this to say. Um, this is about the safeguard of the Christian. Notice this. The time of trouble, such as never was, is soon to open up upon us, and we shall need an experience which we do not now possess, and which many are too indolent to obtain. It is often the case that trouble is greater in, in anticipation than in reality. But this is not true of the crisis before us. The most vivid presentation cannot reach the magnitude of the ordeal. And again, this just confirms what we read in another verse that mm -hmm. this is a time of trouble that, that, that such as never was. Right. And so, you know, when you think about things happening in the future, you're like, man, like you, you get apprehensive, you get anxious. Mm -hmm. um, you, you, it's kind of like you, you, you look forward to it and it's like, man, this is going to be a bad time. Oh, yeah. But when you think about the time of trouble, she says, you can't even conjure up in your mind mm -mm. how it's going to be. Like you're going to have to just wait to feel it in reality. But we're not left, you know, in the wind. You know, this is something we have to prepare for. Another um, thing I think of when she says, you know, you can't even imagine what mm, it's like. I think of right. heaven. You know, yeah, mm -hmm. she's, even the Bible says, I have not seen nor ear heard. <laughs> you know, right. We can't even imagine the beauty of heaven. And mm. knowing that, we know that it's all worth it, whatever we have to mm -hmm. go through. Right what God has prepared for us. Exactly, for those that love him. <laughs> those that love him. For those that, I mean, I can't, I can't wait to meet Enoch. I can't wait to meet Adam and ask him some, I have some questions for Adam when we get there, <laughs> by God's grace. <laughs> but continuing on, Nancy, um, what else does uh, Sister White have to say? Okay, in Last Day Events on page 264, she says, the Lord has shown me repeatedly that it is contrary to the Bible to make any provision for our temporal wants in the time of trouble. I saw that if the saints had food laid up by them, 
or in the field in the time of trouble, when sword, famine, and pestilence are in the land, it would be taken from them by violent hands, and strangers would reap their fields. Man, <laughs> that seems like a, a, a real time of trouble. That means you're growing your food or you're trying to um, store up food for this time that's mm -hmm. going to be like never was, and people you find it's, it's either bad or people are coming to mm -hmm. reap and take what's yours. Friends, this is not a time we want to take lightly. Um, it's something that we will have to prepare for. We know people who have stored up great amounts of food. And um, I noticed that some of that food has had bred worms mm. already. Already, wow. And um, also there are people who have bunkers underground mm. who are preparing for this. <laughs> yeah, right, right. And it's like, you know, with your food going bad, I mean, that's, mm -hmm. especially we spent money on that, and that's, that's going to be a serious thing. But, you know, at this time, God will take care of his people. Yes. And, and God even Bread gives, and water will be sure. Exactly. Your, <laughs> our bread and water will be sure. And there's many instances in the Bible when God's people were, you know, in tough places, the Lord always provided. Mm -hmm. And so let's go to our third and final Bible text, um, which is Revelation chapter 7 and verse 14. The Bible says, And I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest, and he said to me, These are they which came out of great tribulation and have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. You know, Nancy, when we speak about this, this, this great time of trouble, um, this time of great tribulation, you know, I'm reminded of the verse um, in the Bible where, where God says, Our thoughts are not his thoughts, and his ways are not our ways. Mm -hmm. And just like the heavens are far from the earth, so is his ways and our, and our thoughts from his. And, you know, when I think about that, I say, when I say something is like, like greatly, I'm greatly troubled or um, this is very bad, you know, my definition of bad may not necessarily be the definition God has as bad, you know. <laughs> but when God himself and his word is saying that this is going to be a great tribulation, mm -hmm. great trouble, I think we should take that seriously because yes. <laughs> his great really means great. And, and with this time of trouble um, that we're learning about and we're reading about, it's heaven sees it as a time of, that we need to be greatly prepared for. And if heaven wants us to be prepared greatly, we should take it seriously. Mm -hmm. And so as you have read that, um, Nancy, would you like to read what Ellen White has to say about this? Okay. Before I read that quote, when he mm -hmm. says, these are they which came out of great tribulation, mm -hmm. he's talking about the people who are on the earth, who love God with all their heart, who are standing, waiting, ready for Jesus to come. Mm -hmm. And that will be a small number compared to the number of people on the earth, unfortunately. Unfortunately. But that's always the case, Nancy. Yeah, um, it is. When you look at Noah, when he... When the flood came, eight people. Only eight. <laughs> when you look at Sodom and Gomorrah, you know, only it's only three. three. Only three. Like each time, and you look at Elijah, you look at all throughout the stories of the Bible, God, the people that was going to serve God um, and be loyal to Him and be faithful to Him were always fluent, few in number. Mm -hmm. um, you know, God still has 7,000 that didn't bow the knee. Um, but when you look at that 7,000 compared to how many people were there actually oh, were, yeah. <laughs> it was way more people. Um, like a Gideon, you know, the, when mm -hmm. the number was shrunk all the way down to 300. Um, <laughs> it's, it's, that's always the case, but we don't have to fear. You know, if we're staying faithful, if we're, mm -hmm. you know, having a, a healthy relationship with our Lord and Savior, spending time with Him in prayer and devotion and things like that, being obedient and obeying His Word, we have nothing to fear. We'll be a part of that number. This is not That's to scare right. us or anything like that, but it's but we have to, to know. Us. It's to prepare us exactly. <laughs> okay, Ellen White's uh, book, uh, page fifty six, which is also in Latter Day Last Day Events. <clears throat> she writes, "Then will be the time for us to trust wholly in God. There were is faith again, <laughs> mm -hmm. and He will sustain us. I saw that our bread and water will be sure at that time." and that we shall not lack or suffer hunger. For God is able to spread a table for us in the wilderness. If necessary, he would send ravens to feed us, as he did to feed Elijah. 
or rain manna from heaven as he did for the Israelites. Oh man, Nancy, that's, <laughs> I love that. I do too. Because it's, it's kind of like what we just said about when God's people are in hard places, he'll make a way. Mm -hmm. Like if we're in the wilderness and we can't gather our own food or anything like that, he will send ravens. Mm -hmm. He will do whatever he needs to do. He will send an angel if he needs to, to bring it to us. God has a thousand ways to provide for us, that's of right. which we know that's not even right. one. <laughs> um, and so um, continuing on, you know, speaking about this time of trouble, she says, the time of trouble is just before us. And then stern necessity will require the people of God to deny self and to eat merely enough to sustain life. But God will prepare for us, prepare us for that time. In that fearful hour, our necessity will be God's opportunity to impart his strengthening power and to sustain his people. So is God going to leave us out to dry, Nancy? Nope. <laughs> of course not. God will take care of his people. He's our loving father. <laughs> yes, he's our loving father. Um, he's our gentle shepherd as well, as some yes. people like to call it. Um, so Nancy, what else, what else do we have um, that Ellen White has said on this topic? In the book, Great Controversy, she has, when he leaves the sanctuary, darkness covers the inhabitants of the earth. In that fearful time, the righteous must live in the sight of a holy God without an intercessor. Mm. That's why our faith needs to be really strong. <laughs> wow, Nancy, look, like, 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 that is serious. To live <laughs> yes. in the sight of a holy God without an intercessor? Mm. Do we know what an intercessor is? The intercessor is, Jesus is our intercessor. Yeah, <laughs> Jesus is our intercessor. And if we, mm. you know, are, he's not there, and he's coming back to get his people, and we have to live, you know, between God and is that's a serious time. But we don't have to fear if our life is hid with Christ and God. Mm -hmm. And so going forward, as we wrap up, um, in the book Review and Herald, February 7th, 1893, Ellen White has to say, in the great conflict between faith and unbelief, the whole Christian world will be involved. All will take sides. Some apparently may not engage in the conflict on either or on either side. They may not um, appear to take sides against the truth, but they will not come out boldly for Christ through fear of losing property or suffering reproach. All such are numbered with the enemies of Christ. Oh, I hope I'm not in that. <laughs> oh, I hope I'm not either. I hope I hope neither, not even our viewers are a part of that. Mm. Um, we have to be holy, the Lord's. Or, or we're not his at all. And so, you know, as we go through all of this, um, there's, Nancy, there's not one uh, Bible evidence, not one Bible evidence or one Bible text is sufficient enough to be able to, to, to conclusively call someone a prophet. Right. Um, we need multiple um, texts. Um, and, you know, the thing you have to remember too, guys, is that um, if someone claims to be a prophet and they fail even in one, one category. It disqualifies they're disqual them. That disqualifies them. Mm -hmm. And as we have seen um, in the life and teachings of Ellen White, um, she, in all areas, checks off to be a true prophet. And, you know. And all of our findings. Yeah, and all of our findings. Mm -hmm. And even what people have to say about her mm -hmm. um, while she's dead and gone. Um, and today, her writings are, it's like if she was writing today, Nancy. Yes. It's as if she was living today. Yes. Um, and so, again, um, she may have felt under sleep but the holy spirit hasn't and the mm -hmm. holy spirit has been here throughout all of the all of time and so um that's something to keep in mind and friends yes. test the spirits line it up with the word of god and god will prove himself faithful let's close with prayer father in heaven lord thank you so much um, for your word lord thank you so much for not just uh, letting people go off and having to have to wonder and guess at things but you lay out in your word true guidelines to what makes someone a true prophet lord i pray that we will test each person um, as we've seen um, throughout our study in part one and part two we see that ellen white your servant was a true prophet and we thank you lord for the, the writings you have um, uh, been able to give us through her and Lord, help us to be found faithful and help us to read these writings. It's, 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 it's filled with so much truth. But be with our viewers. Bless them and keep them. In Jesus' name.